Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox back again for another episode of the Magnificent Seven Ride Again. Our guest today is Dawn Wire. Dawn, first of all, welcome to the pod. Thank you. It's nice to be here. So could you tell our audience what's the Magnificent Seven? The Magnificent Seven is a wonderful group of ladies, all seven of us, who have been doing art, most of us, for a while. Um, and last year, we all came together to do a show at the Kerr Art and Cultural Center in downtown Kerrville here. And it just turned out to be just a wonderful opportunity to share what we do. So I know a little bit about your backstory, but I'm always intrigued when I can find out about when did the passion hit you for art? Oh, as a child, I have to say as a child, I can't not do art. And whether it's theater or music or fine art, I'm all over it. I always have been. One of the things that struck me about the original Magnificent Seven show was how many children or young, younger people who had not yet done, or have not yet done art came to the show. And so I wanted to maybe ask you about how do we pass on your passion? How do we talk to the eight-year-old girl who sees something that there's a spark in her eye? How can the Magnificent Seven and the Magnificent Seven rides again bring that passion to a new generation of artists? I just want to invite them to come. I would love to personally invite parents to bring their kids. This isn't just an adult art show. It is for the community. And so I think it's important that kids are exposed to that at a young age so that they can see what's out there and uh, they can learn about it, any opportunity. And this, I'm hoping, will be that kind of opportunity. Could you tell us a little bit about the show itself, The Magnificent Seven Rides Again? Where will it be and when will it premiere? It will be September 12th through October 12th. So we're going to be over at the Kerr Art and Cultural Center for a full month. The artist reception is on the 14th from 2 to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. The uh, Let's talk about your work. Could okay. you describe your art for us and maybe tease us with a hint of what you'll be showing at the Magnificent Seven Rides again? My work, primarily, I do a lot of landscapes and still life, and that's what I will be showing at the show. I work in soft pastel, and it's one, it's a different medium than what some of the other artists do. I will be doing, uh, I think I have five out of 15 pieces that are oil, and I'm just looking forward to sharing something new, something from my home back in Northwest Montana, and something from here in this neck of the woods. As I recall, this is your second summer in the Hill Country, is that correct? Third. Third. Yeah. This is the wettest summer we've yes, had in it this is. part of Texas in a long <laughs> time. But, yeah. and I will also add that you women have spoiled me because now when I look at the landscape, all I see is the multitude of greens mm -hmm. and the various shades of green. Is having that type of green literally in July and August something that you draw in inspiration from even today? Oh, yeah. People don't realize just how much color is out there. We just, unless we learn about that, it's hard to see it. But someone who's learning to paint begins to see those colors, multiple shades of green. There's a reason we, the expression purple mountain majesty is there because there are purples and greens and blues. And it's, we all appreciate a, a skyscape for a, a sunrise or a sunset, but that's not where all the color is always. It can be in the rest of the landscape as well. The, what do you hope to accomplish from the second show, The Magnificent Seven Rides Again? It's interesting that you were talking about children earlier because I love to work with kids. Uh, when I was uh, working at our little bookstore back in Montana, I actually had a group of kids that came in after school and we did art and we did little art shows. And I'm hoping that parents, like I said, will come in to do that, 
to to introduce their children. Um, I just believe that a show like this, an amazing opportunity for them. So what would you tell that eight-year-old girl who you see looking at your paintings with eyes wider than perhaps the, the other guests or the other folks looking? What do you tell that girl or boy? First of all, I ask them what they see. What are you looking at? What interests you about that piece of art? And if they're interested in doing art, then I can go ahead and ask them, why is it that you want to do that? What is it you want to learn about that? I love to find out from a child what kind of art they want to do. Do they want to do a landscape? Do they want to paint their dog or cat? Do they want to learn ceramics? What type of art and what do they love? What is their passion? So I think that's a good place to start. I write a lot. And when I'm really on, I see it in my head before I write it. Do you see it in your head or do you look at a landscape and recreate that landscape? I have a hard time not sleeping because I create in my head all the time. <laughs> Sometimes I will take a photo and be so inspired by that photo, but I have to move the composition around or I have to change the colors, figure out how I'm going to describe that through my brush strokes or my pastel sticks, whatever that is. But I ruminate and it's really hard to sleep when that creative bug hits. So uh, I'd like to explore that a little bit with you and that part of your passion. Is it something that you have to get on campus, canvas? Is it something you want to get on canvas or is it something different? When you say different, what do you mean? Is it not one of the two that I named? Oh, I see what you're saying. Is it just an explosion of color you have to get out? It, trying to think of the name. The, the gal, Beatrix Potter, described it once and she said, it doesn't matter whether I see a swill bucket sitting out there. If it has the right lighting, the right color, I have to do it. And I totally can agree with that. Let me change the focus just a little bit because I want to talk about the local art scene and how the award-winning Texas Hill Country Artists podcast have helped publicize local artists as the way to introduce a question, why is it important to publicize and celebrate local artists? I believe that local artists have the ability to put themselves out there as a result. They can, it's, art is important. It's, it doesn't matter whether you are a professional or a child just learning, it's important. And we need to be able to put that out there. And that's the thing that I love about this community. It's the reason we moved here is so that I could step out and do more with my art. And I just think that's part of what makes it so important. It helps the community thrive. It brings people in, whether it's fine art or the theater. It's going gonna, it's gonna to help develop that community. It's going to bring in people booking rooms in hotels. It's going to, it's going to have people paying for gas to come see a show. It's so much more than just coming to see a show. It's good for the community. It's very good for the community. Donna, if our listeners wanted more information about you or your art, what might be the best place they could go? They could go to my website and it's dawnwirefineart.com. They can sign up uh, with their email address, and I promise I won't inundate anyone with uh, lots of emails or anything. But anytime I post something new, they can see firsthand what that is. Don, I'm greatly looking forward to the Magnificent Seven Rides again. Thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me today. Thank you. I really appreciate it.